All right, if you're looking to buy coilovers, one of the things you need to be aware of is what kind of height adjustment they have. There are two main types of height adjustment with practically every coilover kit on the market. There is shock body height adjustment and spring perch height adjustment. And in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you the differences between these two and the pros and cons so you know what you're getting into and what to buy for your car. So, shock body height adjustment. Basically, shock body height adjustment means that there is an adjuster at the bottom of the shock body, just where the mount is, where it mounts to your car. And it allows you to wind the entire damper from here to here using this thread. This whole section is threaded and you can wind the entire thing up or down this whole top bit here, moving the entire thing up and down. The difference between that on the spring perch version is the spring perch versions don't have the bottom adjuster. They only adjust height by the spring perch which basically means if you want to lower the car, you have to wind where the spring sits down. So let's say then you would have the spring perch here and the entire thing would move down. Now there are pros and cons to both of these. So I'm going to explain to you what they are. So with this one, the benefit of the shock body height adjustment is basically you get an extra way that you can adjust your coilovers. It's an extra setting. And so what that allows you to do, and this is especially useful if you're planning to go very low, for example, or you want a huge range of adjustment, is you can adjust the height of the car independently of the spring, the spring load, or where the damper sits in relation to the spring. So if you picture the damper piston, and let's say this is the damper piston, right? What happens is by moving this section here, which is the, the mount, by moving that up, so let's say you move it up here like that, the piston of the damper in relation to the shock and the up top mount everything else doesn't move. And so you retain the same suspension travel and all of the exact same settings. However, you can just lower the car. So that's beneficial because you don't lose any damper travel or stroke or anything like that. By shifting the mount up, you, everything remains the same. And so you want to be bottoming out when you go super low and things like that. Everything operates as it should. You just move the mount up. And that's how a lot of coilover kits now adjust with the, the lower mount because it allows you to keep all of the suspension settings as so. The, pro, the thing with this one is if you lower it, let's say we picture that piston again. And let's say that is the damper piston. We'll ignore this previous mount that I drew. The problem you have with this one is because there's just the spring perch that brings the lower, the top mount down as well. So let's say for instance, you wanted to bring this down and you want to mount, you want to drop it all the way, which goes here, right? And then the spring comes all the way down, etc. This top mount is now going to drop here as well. And that's going to bring, that's going to bring the entire piston of the damper down with it. And now the damper piston is going to sit here instead of up here. And so the issue you have with that is now you're much closer to bottoming out and creating problems. And so with this type of coilover, with the spring perch type, the issue you have is that if you're intending to go a lot lower than they were designed for, you're going to be bottoming out, you're going to blow the seals and your dampers are going to be fucked before you know it. And so the problem is you can only really stay within their recommended range that the damper can work in the recommended range that they designed it for. Unlike these ones, which you can basically max out how low they can go and you've still got the entire suspension travel, obviously ignoring the fact that you might be hitting the body, the inner wheel arches, etc. That, that's a side point. But it operates within the, the realm that it was designed for the, the damper, whereas on this one it doesn't. And so if you're buying spring perch adjustable coilovers, you need to be you need to consider what height you're going to run the car at. So when you find most of the ones that are this type, for example, KW, they use this type of system. They have a very limited recommended height range. And the reason why is because if you go too low, you're gonna bottom out and you're gonna have problems. And also typically with these, the lower you go, the worse the ride gets because the less damper travel you have, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just, it just gets worse the, wor the more you go. So you need to consider that. If you're gonna remain in the realm that they've designed these for, then these are perfectly fine, which is usually like 20 to 40 mil lowering is approximately what they give you, typically speaking anyway. If you're gonna stay within that realm, you don't wanna go too low, then these are perfectly fine. If you need a lot of height adjustment, then you're basically gonna have to go with these ones unless you just like bottoming out all the time and running on the bump stops essentially, because that's the other thing you gotta consider. This 
this will stay here. This part of the de uh, the shock body will stay here. You got the bump stop, and now you're a lot closer to the bump stop as well, and you're going to be hitting that too. Whereas with these, again, that the entire relation between the spring perch and the upper mount and the spring and everything here remains the same. It's just that the shock mount goes up, and so therefore, like this, and so therefore, you haven't really reduced anything other than the overall height of the the actual whole damper itself. Now, the only thing to keep in mind with these is the one of the only negatives to that is that you're going to have less overall stroke, which basically means if you're on a bumpy road, this is more applicable to tracks, honestly, for street, this isn't really going to matter. But if you're on a bumpy track, especially, let's say, if you're doing like rally or something like that, what's going to happen is because this is now shorter, the tire is going to lift off the ground sooner and you're going to have less grip over the bumps if the tire is lifting off the ground because it can't maintain contact for as long. Whereas these, they have the entire travel all the way back up because they typically have a helper spring and that's going to help push the whole thing up. So they retain the entire travel of the, the whole max height, which was like way up here before we lowered it. Whereas these are now limited to here instead of where they were previously, which is down here. So that's basically the only negative of these, but honestly, that's not really that applicable to most people. And again, depending on the design and what height you're running them at, this could also be negligible or not even a problem anyway. So that's something to keep in mind. But that's basically the only negative. So personally, I prefer this type because it gives you more types of adjustment. You can also play around with the spring preload. Now there's debate over how much that does, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not gonna get into that into this video, but basically it allows you to adjust the spring preload and you could say incremental height adjustments independently of the overall height. Another benefit of this as well is let's say you wanted to get softer springs or shorter springs or something like that, you can make the adjustments because if you get a softer spring, now the whole thing is gonna sit lower, but now you could raise this perch up again and then you still have the adjustment of the lower mount as well to get everything perfect. Whereas these, you're very limited. So if you want more customization, if you wanna go lower, et cetera, et cetera, get the shock body adjustment. In most cases, these, this type will be better. If you're intending to run at basically the exact specs that they've designed this suspension to operate in, then this one will be fine. But I know for most people buying coil loaders, they just wanna either slam their car or have a lot of adjustment. So you want the shock body. So the shock body ones, Basically, most of the popular coilover brands have this. McGowan Racing, BC Racing, Fortune Auto, et cetera, et cetera. They all use this type. These ones are more KW use these. A lot of European brands stick to this design for some reason. So KW, Olin's does this though for European run. O Olin's have this type. But KW is this one. Moton is another one I can think of, but they're a basically track specific coilover. Uh, otherwise, some of the cheaper ones, like the cheaper Tains use this and Solo Works and stuff like that use these. So basically a lot of the cheaper ones use this, whereas a lot of the more performance and track orientated ones use this. So basically that is the difference between these two. This is very important to keep in mind what your objectives with the coilovers are so that you can select the right type. Because if you get the wrong one and you want to go super low and you buy a spring perch one, for example, you can basically expect to be bottom out all the time. So it's important to keep these things in mind. If you have any questions about any of these, post them in the comments below and I will answer them. Otherwise, if you're looking to buy coilovers for your car, head over to nefariousracing.com. We've got a massive range of coilovers for practically every car and a bunch of different brands on there. So go check that out. If you need any help selecting coilovers, just shoot us an email. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Catch you on the next one.